Okay, Saturday morning in the kingdom and it's chilly. Yes, see the lights here? I'm trying to show the difference, okay? Can we see how the lights are really bright in the shop and have normal color? I don't know what it's like for you color uh, seeing people, but it looks different to me. All right, we'll do a quick scroll this way. All right, look at this. Look at the skies. Yes. Yesterday was a warm day and I didn't burn my fries in that air fryer. Okay, we have really weird skies here because of the smoke. It's most likely from the Northwest Territories, which is over there. But this morning we woke up with the windows open in the house and it was chilly. All because of lies. Yes, lies. Okay, this morning we woke up to plus 18, but feels like 12. Yes. This is, I'm standing here with a jacket on. There's a cool breeze on my chinny chin chin. Okay. And the weather network is saying plus 18, but feels like plus 18. So it's part of the world control telling us that the world is burning up. Yes. So they're screwing around with the temperatures. Cause there's no way the little sensor at the airport in that plywood box is feeling plus 18. Unless the box is heated. Yes. I just shake my head. On the yo-yo scale, plus 64 Fahrenheit, but feels like plus 64. So we had the twin numbers on a Saturday. But that is unreal how misinformation is being spread because there's no way if I was in the house and I didn't have windows or dogs or anything like that and I dressed for the temperature, I came out here wearing my Speedos thinking it's warm, but it's actually chilly. Yes, un freaking real so that's why we do these morning podcasts or iPod or Impod or, or intros with the weather and showing what I'm wearing, okay? Because there's temperature and then there's actual temperature. And then there's real temperature when you're standing out here holding a stick. Yeah. So this is what I was showing the world, how things are different. Like people say, oh, plus 12 and you're chilly? No, it's a chilly 12. So there's your base temperature and then there's warm and chilly. Okay, so it's all part of control. So they're saying the world is getting warmer and warmer and warmer and the ice age or the ice is melting, all that crap. Yeah, well, if you're screwing around with the temperatures and only showing the, uh, how would you say, increased, increased ones, well, of course that's screwed up. All right, enough of the politics or that Swedish kid's going to give me a call and want to come over and drink my beer. All right, let's scroll back this way. We can see the skies. It's just icky. But we got lots done yesterday, yesterday oh, lots done yesterday. Like we have to really focus on these trucks because that's our only means of transportation. Yes. Okay, now we can see the different colors of lights in the shop. That is a bright, clear light, whereas I'm standing out here in a windy, uh, overcast, orangey, grayish thing. Just like the moon the other night. All right. So we have the parts on the 69 here to do the back brakes, okay? So hopefully we get those done and we can do the front brakes because I'm only bringing the parts out as I need them out of the house. Oh, I got the burps. Ooh, ah, mm. Oh, ah, okay, everybody have a drink. All right, I put way too much peanut butter on my toast this morning because I was trying to empty the jar so then the dogs can have, have it as a frozen treat, right? They love peanut butter. Okay, so I bring out the parts for each item. So we're doing the back brakes today or this morning, hopefully. Okay, we have enough parts to do the 69 because I think it'll be on the road first because it has a windshield that we can actually see out whereas the 67 we don't, okay? Unless we're like Ace Ventura and hang our head out the window, but there's too many bugs, mosquitoes, and too chilly up here. Okay, so we do the back brakes and then once that is done, we go back in the house and we haul out the parts for the front brakes. That way we don't get confused, eh? Pretty smart thinking when you're an old guy. That way you're not trying to put the front brakes on the back, you know? I've done that before. Okay. All right. Oh, geez. I'm all screwed up today. Oh, oh yes. And that air fryer that Sir Rodney sent us worked nice. I cooked my fries and it didn't heat up the house. But people have a hard time understanding. We cook to heat our house, Okay. So we're always chilly up here. So we're cooking items to cook in the oven to warm up the house. Like why go over there as if you're on welfare and just turn up the thermostat and open the window? No, we plan our meals to heat the house up. 
So if the house is warm, it's not too bad outside. We'll cook like craft. We'll cook KD on the stove, right? So it doesn't really heat the house up. But if it's chilly, damp, and rainy, miserable day, you know the rainy season in September, which we've had since July, okay? Then we cook meatloaf, chicken, uh, everything in the oven to warm it up, especially fries, because fries are 425 for 20 minutes. You gotta flip them at 10, right? Or are they kind of brown on one side only? Okay, so that's the joys of living in wilderness Alaska. We have to base our meals on what the temperature is outside, right? Okay, like we're not cooking a turkey on a hot day, right? That doesn't make sense. And then you crank the air conditioner up, which draws more power. Yes, more power. All right, well, I better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, very strange skies, but we're hiding inside the shop here. I got the truck jacked up extra high because that's the only way I could get the jack stands in. On the driver's side, I marked everything in the purple. Let's go to the passenger side now. Okay, over here. See what, how much talent we have. Okay, so I did one side at a time and I take lots of pictures. This side was marked yellow. I don't know if you can see the yellow in here, but I took my time and did it correctly. And I love my, never sees, it's everywhere. We got it here, we got it there. Oh, I got the burps. And there's the park brake cable. I've got it tightened up, okay? That way it's pulling on here so you can actually get this thing to assemble. Okay, I survived the burp. So what I did was take a tarp strap, squeeze it down to grab the ball, and then I can pull it tight, okay? Plus, we never seize everything on this cable, work it in. Same as the wheel cylinder here, everything gets never seized, including this gets removed and never seized to death. Because I don't want, I'm, a, I'm gonna be owning this truck for over 20 years. Also too, you gotta remember, the back brake shoe has more pads than the front brake shoe. So I marked them as I took them apart. So it's easy to remember. So when this one goes back together, it has the park brake lever system, okay? Also too, you buy the kit or the hardware kit as they call it. This one was pretty good. We got the C-clips, the rubber thingy and all the pieces. Plus these ones come in the extra long, but the hardware kit is for front and back brakes. But also too, they never give you anything for the park brakes okay i don't know why so you're, you've got to be careful not to lose a spring or anything like that also too we're getting set up here to make the steel brake lines okay because they are rusted out we don't waste our time with them all right let's go back over here you guys are getting your exercise today all right so here's the brake lines the new wheel seal cylinder is in and then we're going to make new brake lines the steel brake lines to go to the rubber hose that goes up. Plus today, when I make the steel brake lines for this truck, I'll make it for the 67 because I don't have the brake shoes that have arrived yet. So we'll prepare, prepare everything so it goes together quickly when the brake shoes arrive. Okay, coffee time in the kingdom and I put the original brake drums back on because the other ones, Sir Rodney's still waiting for them to arrive, okay? Okay, so we don't want the rain, snow or whatever to get on the new brake shoes and stuff. Okay, we're lucky enough to get the flex hose out of the frame because it's up, tucked up in front of this front cross member there. But I took my time and did it, plus I also lubed everything down. So this is up in the frame, okay? So now you double check everything, all right? Because these flex hoses can come with different threads on the end here. So this is the T on the rear end. Oh, hand and eye coordination. Okay, so you gotta make sure it threads on here. Because they can have the threads look the same, but when it comes to put it on, they're not. I've learned the hard way, okay? All right, let's go over to the workbench. Also, too, this is the fittings and everything we have to have in stock. Like we buy in bulk and everything through Sir Rodney. It is here for a reason, okay? There's a reason why it's here. Because I have to walk around over here, okay? So the key to speed and quality flares, okay? This video here, we'll do a disclaimer, since how these are brake lines and people, you know, could fix their brakes and then crash their car because, oh, the king of obsolete said to do it this way. No, this is not the proper way or the technical way to do brake line flares. This is the way we do it at the end of the world because it works up here in Wilderness, Alaska. So there's a disclaimer. So you can't sue me or whatever, whatever they say, you know, okay. First thing you do is you get organized. Everything is organized, all right? We're measuring the 
the brake lines because we're cutting for two, the 67 and the 69. Plus we added a little bit longer because we're making them custom fit in case we have to shorten them. Also too, only bring over the exact number of fittings needed, okay? So I know I got one left. I've got one in the clamp here, okay? So there we have it. Also too, the electrical tape is to keep the fittings up where they're supposed to be because you don't want them to slide down and then you bend the tube and then you won't slide back and then you're screwed, all right? So okay, we'll start over here. We're gonna get you guys confused. All right, I've done a production run of two for each vehicle. So I've had good luck with, with my fittings, okay? As you can see, they're nice. And also too, you know you got a good fitting when you can run your finger around and it's not sharp because there's no burrs. All right, let's start with a new video here on how to do it. Okay, to start making brake, brake lines, make sure you have lots in inventory, okay? So this is what we buy for all the vehicles in the kingdom because we have the Chevy trucks. We buy it by the spool, okay so we roll it out all right and then once we cut it with the cutter we use the hand file right here on the ends because if the the cutter bevels it so you want it flat all right all the tools are laid out for a certain reason here so there's our product we'll have our line sitting up here and then they go through the thing so my tools are laid out okay we have the never sees, the screwdriver, the file, and the squeezer thing. So now you put your brake line in, you got your fitting, and then this thing has to stick out just at the height of that. I don't know if we can see that. All right, so now we take a dab of the never sees, wang it on the top, and then put this in, okay? And then when we squish this down, okay, it does your first bevel or whatever, this has to touch here all right so then when you go to pry lift it out this thing gets stuck in there because that's like a little quarter inch or three sixteenths or eighth inch prong so you have to be very careful like opening your dad's liquor cabinet on a saturday night at three in the morning when you're only 13 years okay i'm back all right so you have to use the screwdriver and be very careful prying this out because it's in there compressed all right because you've taken and beveled this down all right so you just jiggle and wiggle and take your time like opening your dad's liquor cabinet when you're 13 years old or whatever so you just be very careful always have an extra one of these in inventory so once you get it squished down all right then you just use the uh the tool there and you push it down a little bit okay so i'll do that right now and then i'll restart the video okay i've done the compression with the die or whatever they call it there okay so i use the screwdriver everything is laid out for a reason and everything has to be clean so i've done the compression down on this okay they say to go right down and make it squish and ooh and ah and everything like that no i go so it's snug because i don't want it form the shape of the dies okay Let's see if we have enough talent here i'm using my left hand there that worked good okay now this is what we do here Okay. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening. I can't see anything. Whoops. All right, now I'm back to full production here. Okay, pull this out. Keep everything clean. All right. Not sure if you can see it, but there's the burrs from the die or the clamp. Okay. So now we use the emery cloth to buff it good. Okay. Once it's smooth. All right, you get that thing smooth. You put lots of uh, never sees on and we concentrate on the top here. Like goo it in there, goo everything. It doesn't matter if these fittings were made for the Queen of England, they're still a poor quality. So we thread, uh, goop up the threads with never sees because we want a lubricant. And then we're threading it into here, okay? This is the final press a compression of the bevel okay or the flare because you want that nice flare in there because that's a machine flare and that's what all how would you say uh products or brake line products is designed for that bevel or flare so it's only natural we do a compression here whoops do the compression here and finish out with a smooth one in here okay so that works out good all right i'll quickly do that 
Okay, so that's the final compression right there. Like I'm using one hand on here, one hand on here, and I did a really good torque for an old guy. Like I squished it down good. And then that's what you want. You want the, the flared fitting that you're making to match a machine fitting for what the application is. Like copying, how would you say, this this thing here, that's just a, just a, de a template or a die, right? So going back over here to do it, this fulfills the completion. And also too, we have them here for the quarter inch brake lines and we're using the all steel fitting in here to get compression, the final compression. And then once I take it out of here, I'll run my finger around the top. If it's sharp, that's, that's no good. Like I don't have to put my glasses on or my bionic glasses on to see, but as long as it feels smooth to my fingers, then we're good to go. And then we can continue on and install the brake lines onto the truck. Okay, just about five o'clock in the kingdom and we're done for the day. All the parts are organized. Okay, so we have the U-joints, the hanger bearing, the emergency park brake cables and the flex hose for the 69. We have the 69 brake shoes and then all the miscellaneous brake parts go on the, with everything else here, okay? So we're getting smart. We got the brake lines in, they're a little longer, but that's okay. I don't know if we can see anything there. But the thing is up here, brake lines get, how would you say, abused. Yes, abused. So it's best to make them long because they'll get ripped off or ice or rocks or debris against them. Doesn't matter how well you protect them. All right, let's park this truck outside and we'll call it a day. Saturday morning in Whoville, getting ready to go up shopping. I didn't go yesterday because we didn't really need nothing yet, so I'm going to go this morning. The weather's a little weird. The sky looks funny. It's chilly, but it says it's really warm right now, but it's not because I'm wearing a sweater. Now it's time to let the dogs out, eat breakfast, and get ready to go shopping. Just came back from shopping for three water jugs and three bags plus that case of pop right there. It was 99 bucks, which isn't bad. There wasn't much on sale, so I didn't get anything, but I did grab some bread and a few other stuff for us. Now it's time to head to the kingdom and drop everything off. Almost lunchtime and the sky is still really weird. To the eye, it looks kind of orange out there because of all the smoke, but I guess on camera it doesn't look that bad. When you go inside, it's really dark in the house because there's no sun out, and it kind of seems dark out here. It says it's really hot out right now, but it's not because I'm still wearing a sweater. There's a cool, cool wind, and it's kind of chilly out right now. This morning while I was shopping, I came across some popcorn. Normally we don't get it because it's too expensive, but this stuff was on sale for a dollar, dollar fifty, so that was a good deal. Normally it's like seven dollars for the big bag off to the left there. I figured we'd give it a try, and it's barbecued seasoned popcorn, and we got a salted caramel popcorn, so that's fancy. And of course I had to give my dad some, that's why the bags are open. Hopefully they don't get stuck in his remaining teeth. After lunch and I'm getting ready to go fishing, got my bag packed and my rod ready. Since it's cloudy out there and smoky, I can actually go out and it's not hot. I still have my sweater on, so this weather is very strange today and the sky is still orange. You can kind of see from the background behind me, it's orange. My first stop in behind Whoville and it's a little windy, but that's okay. I'm going to make my way down the bank a little more and go fishing over at the rock and hopefully I can catch something here. If not, I'm going to make my way that way. My first cast out and look what I caught, just a little baby one. At least I know they're here, so now I'm going to reel them in and let them go. I didn't have time to put my mic on, so it might be a little windy. I should just leave my headset on because look at this guy. I can't even get him completely in the screen here. He's that big. This is a keeper for sure. At least I know they're here now. Got the jackfish all cleaned up and put into a butter container since I don't have any other containers. This will have to do. It is really windy here, so I'll get back to fishing. This is another fishing spot I like to go to. It is very windy here, so bear with me. Even with the mic on, you're still going to hear wind. And of course, there's garbage, which I'll pick up before I leave. Look at this. This is actually just on the other side of where I was. I was up on the other side of the bay here, and now I walk this way. And then I'm going to continue on down there and go around that side of the bay. First cast at the new place and I already caught one. This is a decent sized guy so I will keep him and I can have him for supper and then the other one I got will be for my dad. 
just got back from fishing i decided to come home instead of going out to another spot like i said i was gonna do but i wanted to go drop these off to my dad in the kingdom that way i didn't have to carry fish all the way across town i wasn't very far from my house anyway so it didn't take me long to get back home now it's time to head over and go drop this off my legs are a little sore from walking all over the place but it's worth it that fish looks really good and my dad's gonna enjoy it tonight hopefully he'll give you guys a video of it coffee time and I just came back from the kingdom went and dropped off the fish for my dad he was very happy and surprised I actually caught something this is the weather we're sitting at right now it says 22 degrees celsius which is 71 degrees fahrenheit but it feels a lot cooler than that the sun's trying to peek out and you can actually see the sky now so that's nice now it's time to head back inside and let the dogs out while I was out fishing today I got pooped on well, at least my bag did. Thankfully, I didn't because that would have sucked. But as you can see right there, there's a little left. I ran out of paper towel and stuff to clean it off while I was out fishing. But that's okay because the bag is waterproof. Thank you to Sir Rodney. Now I can finish cleaning this off and get my stuff ready to go fishing again later. For supper, I'm having barbecue chicken with onion mixed in, and I have mashed potatoes on the side with a piece of bread. My supper is not as exciting as my dad's tonight, but hopefully I can go fishing again tonight. If not, I'll try and go tomorrow because those places are doing really good right now, and I want to go back. But that's the end of my day. Okay, it's freaking windy out here, but it's not that warm. Like, it's chilly in a t-shirt. Ooh, look at them clouds move. Let's check on the flags. They should be happy. And they are. Look at them go. All right. I'm happy too. The staff left me a care package. So I finish up work early. I can fry some fish, drink some beer. A true Canadian on September long weekend. Yes. All right. Let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer and fry some fish. Oh, make a video. And we'll talk to you guys later.